Hello, everybody. We're going to hit you up with another presidential election. This one, the election of 1796. George Washington stepping down after two terms. So we're going to elect ourselves a new president in this election. Who's it going to be? We're going to take a look at that right now. So the incumbent president is George Washington. He is going to set a precedent. His presidency is really all about setting precedents, but this is the biggest one he sets. He does not go for a third term. Now there's no law yet I'm saying that presidents cannot go for a third term. But he believes that the president should only serve two terms. So he sets a president by stepping away after two terms in office. Now, now this president is going to hold until FDR breaks it in 1940. That election video is set for July the 3rd. By the way, if you want to keep up with the dates of these videos. So as a result, the door is wide open for the presidency. And remember, no 12th Amendment. So electors vote for two people for president. Whoever finishes in first becomes president. Whoever finishes second becomes the vice president. Now first we're going to take a look at the Federalist candidates. Technically, since even though George Washington was an independent, the Federalists are pretty much the dominant party in the United States at this time. I'm the Federalist putting up the sitting vice president, John Adams of Massachusetts, um, Thomas Pickney of South Carolina, the Chief Justice of the United States, Oliver Ellsworth of Connecticut, the Governor of New York, John Jay, Supreme Court Justice James Iredell of North Carolina, Samuel Johnston, also North Carolina, and Charles Coatsworth Pickney. Remember that name because his name is going to come up in future elections. He is the minister to France, and he is from South Carolina. Um, the Democratic Republicans, meanwhile, they're going to put up Thomas Jefferson of Virginia, um, Senator Aaron Burr of New York, um, Samuel Adams, who was a cousin of John Adams, and Samuel Adams is the governor of Massachusetts, George Clinton of New York, and Senator John Henry of Maryland. Now, the first two presidential elections, um, everyone already knows the outcome. George Washington gets elected, and really, the only contest we have is the vice presidency. And now, with Washington stepping down, um, we can actually get a little bit of competition into this election. And the Federalists campaigning heavily for Vice President Adams, although he did have opposition in this election from his own party and from the Democratic Republicans, obviously. And same thing goes for Thomas Jefferson. The Democratic Republicans campaign for Mr. Jefferson, but remember, he has opposition from within his own party and also from the Federalists. And this was a pretty nasty campaign. The Federalists attempted to identify the Democratic Republicans with the violence that took place as a result of the French Revolution. If um, you don't know your world history, French Re the French Revolution um, was a revolution that took place in France in the late 1780s and the early 1790s that overthrew the Bourbon monarchy of King Louis XVI and brought in republicanism in France and led to the rise of a guy named Napoleon Bonaparte to power. Keep that name in the back of your mind because he's going to be mentioned in future election videos. Now, meanwhile, the Democrats are accusing the Federalists 
that favoring monarchism and aristocracy. Remember, the Federalists were pro-British, while the Democratic Republicans were pro-French. Now, also, um, the Republicans targeted Vice President Adams. Um, they attempted to identify Adams with the policies developed by Alexander Hamilton during the Washington administration. Um, these policies, um, they claimed, were too much in favor of Great Britain and a centralized national government. Remember, the Federalists wanted a big central government. Um, the Democrats wanted the states to have most of the power, states' rights. They favored states' rights. Now, Hamilton, although he's actually not running in this election, he himself opposes Vice President Adams, and he is attempting a little bit of trickery by undermining his, by Adams' election. Now, as far as foreign affairs is concerned, um, the Republicans denounced the Federalists of a Jay's Treaty. Jay's Treaty was signed about the mid-1790s that solved a little bit of lingering problems with Great Britain that stemmed from the Treaty of Paris in 1783 that ended the American Revolution. Um, the Federalists also attacked the moral character of Jefferson. Um, they were accusing him of being an atheist, and if you don't know what an atheist is, um, an atheist is someone that doesn't believe in any religion at all, doesn't believe in God, doesn't believe in Allah, if you're a Muslim, any of that type of thing. But anyway, um, and they also accused Jefferson of being a coward during the American Revolution. Jefferson um, never served in the American Revolution, in the Revolutionary War, but he did write the Declaration of Independence. Now, um, Jefferson was also accused of being too pro-France. Too pro-France. But this accusation was underscored when the French ambassador embarrasses, basically, makes a complete fool of himself and embarrasses the Democratic Republicans by publicly backing Jefferson and attacking the Federalists right before the election. Um, we're going to, a new state has joined the Union since the 1792 election, that is Tennessee. Tennessee can now vote in a presidential election, um, 138. The electoral votes for cash and needed 70 to win. And with that in mind, let's get to the results. John Adams becomes the second president of the United States. He wins this election, but by a squeaker. He's going to win 71 electoral votes just one vote shot just one vote over the threshold needed to win the election he carries nine states um, Jefferson wins 68 electoral votes he carries seven states and this is going to create a little bit of a conundrum here Adams a Federalist winning the presidency and Jefferson a Democratic Republican winning the vice presidency what? We'll talk about that in just a second. I'm um, taking a look at the rest of the results here. Thomas Pickney receiving 59 electoral votes. Aaron Burr finishing with 30. Sam Adams with 15. Oliver Ellsworth with 11. George Clinton with 7. John Jay finishing with 5 electoral votes. Uh, Mr. Aradell finishing with 3 electoral votes. Even President Washington, although he was retiring, after two terms, he ends up receiving two electoral votes. John Henry receives that same amount. Samuel Johnston receiving two electoral votes as well. 
and Charles Cosworth Pickney receiving one electoral vote. Now, this is the only election in American history to have a president and a vice president elected from two different parties. Now, remember, under the old electoral college system, whoever became whoever won first place, remember, the electors would cast their ballots for two people. Whoever would whoever finished in first place would win the presidency. Whoever finished in second place would win the vice presidency. And as a result of this, each party intended um, to manipulate the results by having some of their electors cast one vote for the intended presidential candidate and one vote for somebody besides the intended vice presidential candidate. They even their vice presidential candidate a few votes shy of their presidential candidate. But this scheme in this election became a little bit complicated for a couple of reasons. One, all electoral votes were cast on the same day and you know we're in the near the end of the 18th century so we don't have Facebook, we don't have cell phones, we don't have Twitter, we don't have you know, any of those things that can spread the news very quickly. So communications in between states were going at a snail's pace. Essentially they were extremely slow and this made it very difficult to coordinate which electors were to manipulate their vote for vice president. Um, also there was a rumor going around that southern electors pledged the Jefferson were coerced by Alexander Hamilton to give their second vote to Pickney in hope of electing him president instead of Adams. This was Hamilton's way of undermining Adams' chances of re-election. <clears throat> now, as it turned out, all eight electors in Pickney's home state of South Carolina um, as well as at least one elector in Pennsylvania cast ballots for both Jefferson and Pickney. Despite these extra votes, however, they were overwhelmed by at least 20 Adams electors who failed to cast their own vote for Pickney. These factors gave us Adams, a Federalist, for pre as president, and gave Jefferson a Democratic Republican as vice president. Now historians call this election as the beginning of the first party system. Um, this first party system would last until 1824. It's basically Federalists and Democratic Republicans. The Federalists are Northern Bay. Become a Northern based party. Um, the Democrats become a Southern based party. And those middle states hold the threshold of power in American politics. Now, as I said earlier, Adams and Jefferson are the only president, president, vice president duo elected from different parties. Um, John Quincy Adams and John C. Calhoun would later be elected as political opponents, but they were both Democratic Republicans. Um, Andrew Johnson, Abraham Lincoln, and that was in 1824. In the election of 1864, um, Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln and Andrew Johnson were elected president and vice president, but Lincoln was a Republican, Johnson was a Democrat, but Lincoln ran on a National Union ticket. Um, those, two those two election videos will be coming up in the future. Now also this election would provide part of the impetus for the 12th Amendment. Um, on the 6th of January, 1797, um, William L. Smith of South Carolina, he is a member of the House of Representatives. He presents a resolution for an amendment to the Constitution <clears throat> by which the presidential electors would designate which candidate would be president and which would be vice president. Um, this proposal 
um, was not taken on. No action was taken to it. Adam serves his first term. And this sets up the stage for the crazy election of 1800. That election we will talk about next time. Um, thank you for watching this video. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos, go ahead and watch those if you want. And with that, we will see you next time.